Hi everybody, thank you so much for dropping by. Today I've got two snowy, chilly stories for you. So grab a blanket and stay warm. The first one is a new story, and the second one is one from about a year ago. So if you don't want to hear that one again, that's fine, just skip it. Alright, I hope you enjoy. My name is Gina, and I was born and raised in the Northeast. So was my husband, Harry. For those who've lived in the Northeast, large snowfalls are nothing unusual at all, but the types of winter storms can vary greatly. There can be a big difference in winter storms, even if the final measurement of accumulated snow is similar. There's a dramatic difference between getting two feet of snow over five days from getting the same amount of snow in just 20 hours. And then if you add other things like ice, sleet, or high winds, it can dramatically change what that storm feels and looks like. There was one storm back in 1993 that would turn out to be very memorable for a few reasons. They wound up dubbing it the storm of the century. I was supposed to work in the afternoon on that day. It was March of 93, and it was a Saturday. My husband and I were out running some errands that morning, and my gut instincts were telling me I shouldn't go to work. That snow was really coming down, very heavy, very fast. I said to Harry that I was going to call off work. Now, Harry was disagreeing with me. He didn't think it would be that bad at all. He felt because it was coming down so quickly, it would end quickly. But I'm really glad I called off and didn't go to work. I would have wound up being stranded at work for days. I had that happen once before and it was not pleasant. So we finished our shopping in the morning and returned home. I called my place of work and just a couple of hours later, Harry had to finally agree that my intuition was obviously correct. This storm was going to be a doozy. We were feeling so lucky that we'd gone for groceries and other necessities that we had nowhere urgent to be, that we were both safely at home. We even stopped earlier that day to rent a few movies, so we were feeling pretty lucky and content. We had dinner and then checked out some local news, and then we started watching a movie. According to those news stations, the governor had declared a state of emergency. The snow was falling so quickly that plows just couldn't keep up. They were warning that icy road conditions and low visibility made it incredibly hazardous and that people would be fined or possibly even arrested if they were caught attempting to travel for any non-emergency reason. And for this storm, they were actually doing it. It wasn't just the warning they usually gave. They were actually pulling people over that they caught. It was about 7 p.m. when we started to hear the winds howl. It suddenly shifted from very strong winds of about 40 miles per hour to much stronger winds of about 55 miles per hour. And then there were these gusts of winds that were between 70 and 80 miles per hour. It was really getting hazardous. My husband and I had seen a blizzard or two in our lives, but this was the worst in our lifetime so far and we hadn't even seen what was yet to come. There was very little that we could do. All we could really do was hunker down and stay warm. At one point, the winds were shrieking so loudly and were so strong that snow was being pushed through tiny cracks and spaces in the windows and doors. Cracks and spaces that we didn't even know existed. We started rolling up newspaper and towels to try to keep the snow out. This blizzard turned out to be something incredible. Big four-wheel drive trucks, big commercial trucks were stuck everywhere. Even they couldn't make it through. The snow drifts were 10 to 12 feet high, with some as high as 20 feet. We were stuck inside the house, literally stuck inside. There was no way we were getting out. The snow drifts were keeping us from getting out of any door. And if that wasn't bad enough, Something was about to happen that we were in no way prepared for. What happened while we were trapped inside our house, we believe had to be caused by or somehow brought by the snow. 
We know that doesn't make much sense, but what else could it be? We've never dealt with anything like this, not before that storm or after it. It began with the very cliché knocking on the windows of the balcony that was off the bedroom on the second floor. The home we were renting was a very small one-bedroom raised ranch. The garage and laundry on the bottom and on the second story was the main floor, with the bedroom being in the front, then the living room, then the kitchen. The stairs leading down to the laundry and garage were just off the kitchen. For some reason that neither of us can explain, the more in the center of the house we were in, the safer we felt. Never completely safe, but safer. We felt more comfortable in the living room and the kitchen. The worst spot was in the bedroom, where it first started. We don't know what it was that was stalking us, but for some reason we both had the same belief, that it was something demonic, and we both felt like we might disappear if this thing had its way, leaving behind only a mystery of how two people could have vanished during a blizzard. When it first began with the knocks, right away we ruled out that the high winds were making the noises. Then we noticed something that I think would scare just about anybody. We could look out of most windows and although we couldn't see very much, we could at least see the snow coming down and blowing around. But the balcony windows, where the knocking first came from, were totally blacked out. It wasn't just dark, it wasn't the darkness of nighttime. We saw that out of the other windows, that darkness of nighttime along with the snow. We saw that out of every other window. No, this wasn't just dark, it was complete and total blackness. It looked like somebody had literally painted the windows black. But we realized that that's how we knew where it was. Because when we attempted to look out of every other window, there was the snow and the nighttime, but when it was at a window, it was that complete and total blackness. When we first saw that total blackness, we didn't know what it was. We also wondered how in the world it could expand to cover multiple windows. We also noted that it either floated up high or had some way of clinging to or crawling up to the house's second story. Wings, we wondered, and then we both saw what we believed to be its eyes. We never did see any head. It was just this black mass that really didn't seem to have much of a shape. But we do believe we saw its eyes. They were just these dull, gray circles. Solid gray, no pupils. When Harry and I sat in the living room and talked, we found that we were both thinking the same things. It was a bit frightening that when we were comparing what we were thinking, we had nearly the exact same thoughts. Neither of us had been in a church in many years, yet we both felt it was evil and probably demonic. We had the feeling that it wanted to come inside. And if it did, we'd probably both be gone forever. We asked each other if this thing could possibly be using mind control on us, since we both had the same exact thoughts. Harry was the kind of guy that just wasn't afraid of anything. I've never seen him fear any person or animal in all the years I've known him. I've seen him fear for the safety of others, but I've never once seen him fear for his own self. Except for that weekend. Except for the weekend of that blizzard. That was the one and only time I ever saw a flash of fear for his own safety. Now we don't know what it wanted. Maybe all it wanted to do was terrify us. If so, mission accomplished. We stayed confined to the living room mostly. At times we were trying to forget about it. Then at other times we were trying to make plans on how we might escape or fight this thing if it actually did get inside. Once it got dark, every couple of hours we would check to see where it was. We would see the pure black mass and sometimes we'd see those awful, dull gray eyes. Always outside of one of those windows. And except for a very rare knocking sound, that thing stayed silent. 
During the blizzard, we mostly tried to sleep during the daytime hours because we couldn't see it during the daylight. We don't know if it was there or not, we just know we couldn't see it. We wound up being stuck in our home for three full days. Couldn't get out of any of our doors. We were completely trapped. On the fourth day, we were so happy to hear plows, and we also learned that the temperatures were rising, the sun was out, and the snowdrifts were beginning to melt. We would finally be out. Well, three months later, we moved out of that home that we really liked, and we moved into our next rental that we hated. We stayed there until we purchased a home the following spring. In the years since that blizzard, we've experienced other big snowstorms and blizzards without anything abnormal happening. I suppose we'll never know what that thing really was, but we definitely felt the evilness of it. It's fine if we don't know, because we're just happy if we never see it again. My name is Joan. Back in 2011, I was in my early 50s, and my daughter Mia was 19 years old. We live in Vermont, and this is what happened on the scariest and strangest night we've ever had. Mia was working at a local restaurant on the weekends, and it didn't close until 1 a.m., after cleaning up, Mia didn't get off work until 2 a.m. Then I'd pick her up, which was only a 10-minute ride from where we lived. So typically, there was never any problem in taking Mia to work or picking her up. But this one weekend over the winter of that year, we got a really heavy snowfall. The roads were getting really bad, really treacherous. Mia couldn't get off work early, so I called her at about 1 a.m., and I told her that I'd be waiting out in the parking lot whenever she got done. And I let her know how bad the road conditions were. The snow was coming down very hard, visibility was low, and the roads were getting, well, downright treacherous. I finally got there at about 1.30 a.m. Mia came outside just 15 minutes later, and that's when she realized just how bad this snowstorm was. I told her that it took me extra long to get to her. So we left and headed home, slowly. The roads were terrible. The visibility was so low, I couldn't see very far ahead of me at all. It really was getting to be one of the worst snowstorms I'd seen in a long time. Well, just as we made a left, a huge tree branch fell, landing on the hood of my car. It scared me, so I hit the brakes, which caused us to slide, and we hit a tree. Mia and I were fine, but we'd have to get out of the car to move the tree branch out of the way. Mia got out helping me because there's no way I could move it by myself. So we got the branch out of the way, got back into the car, which thankfully wasn't badly damaged. It was drivable. We finished making the left turn and continued down the road. We didn't have much further to go. I made the right turn, and then suddenly I heard a loud pop and my car started making this odd sound. I couldn't tell what it was, but I knew there was something wrong with the car. It just didn't feel right. It kind of felt lower on the rear passenger side. So I stopped the car, and at first I didn't see anything wrong, but then I heard the hissing sound. The tire was going flat. I did have a donut tire in the trunk, but it wasn't safe to try to change it during this storm. With the roads being so slippery, I felt that someone could have easily slid into us while I was changing the tire. So I decided to park the car, telling Mia that we'd have to walk the rest of the way home. We'll deal with the flat tomorrow. We were both pretty unhappy about having to walk the rest of the way in that weather, but I didn't feel like we had a safe choice. So we got our stuff out of the car and started walking. Suddenly Mia said, Mom, what's that? Now, I didn't know what she meant, and then she pointed. And when we got a few feet closer and the street light was shining on it, well, that's when I saw what Mia was talking about. It was this really tall, skinny thing. It was really tall. About as tall as a pickup truck is long. My guess is it was easily 10 foot, maybe 12 foot or 13 foot tall. It was huge. Now, it was less than 20 feet or so from where we were standing. We both let out a scream, grabbed each other's hands, and 
started to try to run in the snow without falling. We didn't get very far. Both of us slipped and fell to the ground. We were struggling to get up in the snow and the ice. We heard laughter. Sinister, demonic-sounding laughter. We got up as quickly as we could and started running again. We finally got home, we got inside, and we locked the doors. We were both terrified of this thing chasing us. We both quickly went around, making sure that all the doors and windows were locked tight. And then we both knew that this thing could easily break a window, so we kept watch for this thing. We talked about what we both saw, both agreeing on its size, and after about an hour passed, we didn't see or hear this thing at all. We felt like hopefully it was over and we could go to bed. Well, at around 4 a.m., Mia was waking me up. I was half asleep asking her what was wrong. Mia said that something was tapping at her window. It was tapping so loud that it woke her up. Well, I went into her room and I saw what looked like a shadow just outside her window. I pulled the blind up and I was looking straight into the most disturbing eyes of that thing. This pale gray or whitish looking thing with slanted black eye sockets, not eyes like humans have. It had these small black spots and then more small black spots where a nose should be. I didn't see any mouth at all. I let go of the blind string and ran. I called the police right away, not telling them what I saw. I knew they would never take me seriously if I did. I just said that someone was looking in my daughter's bedroom window. Mia and I waited almost an hour in another room, waiting for help to arrive. We finally saw lights flashing in the driveway. We looked out a window and noticed that it nearly stopped snowing at that point. I opened the door for the police and explained to them that someone had been looking in Mia's window. They walked around the house and returned about ten minutes later, saying they had found odd-looking footprints. They said that the prints left in the snow were really unusual. They said, first it was odd that they weren't wearing any shoes, and that the footsteps in the snow had an odd shape, almost more like the shape of a hand than a foot and they only saw the impression of three long toes on each footprint. Also, they said it was the most peculiar thing to them that the footsteps were only outside of Mia's window. There were no footsteps leading to the window or away from it. One cop considered that it might be a hoax by someone. The other cop was saying that because there was only one other home near ours, and it's mostly a wooded area behind the homes, he thought it was most likely an animal. Their theories weren't very convincing, nor did they make much sense to me at all. But I did understand the unusual circumstances, and nobody, including me, wanted to make the claim that an alien or a cryptid was on the loose. They just told us to make sure to keep the windows and doors locked, and call if the strange animal came back. After the police left, Mia and I talked about the strange events of that night. Both of us were in agreement that there were no local animals with three toes that could have looked into her window, which was on the second floor of the house. The only possible answer would be a three-toed sloth that climbed up the house. But that wouldn't make sense in the winter months in Vermont. Also, Mia and I know what we saw a few hours before the tapping on the window. That was no animal, and it certainly wasn't human either. Now, we have no idea what it was. A cryptid? A demon? An alien? We have no idea what it was, and we haven't seen it since that night, and we certainly hope we never see it again. Okay, guys, that's all I've got for today. But you know I'll be back really soon with more stories. Do me a favor and hit that like button before you leave. And keep those comments coming because I love them. Alright guys, until the next time, everybody stay safe. And keep your eye out for the scary and the strange. Alright guys, bye for now. Take care.